So, you've got a license, excellent, and you've got a ride, even better. But before you do, allow us to give you a few quick tips on the recommended driving position. These recommendations at the very least should taper your fatigue and in extreme cases, avoid unnecessary injuries. The first thing that we're gonna tackle are the seats, or in this case, the distance of the seats from the pedals. Now, a good indicator is to make sure that your left foot is firmly planted at an angle on the footrest. For several reasons that is important, such as number one, if you can give 100% on that footrest, that means you can give 100% on the brake pedal, which is very, very important. Number two, in times of hard braking, that left foot will act sort of like an anchor so that when you need to it'll keep you in place. And number three, at this angle, whether you're driving a matic or a stick, it will save you strain on your knees. And also, in the extreme cases of an accident, bent limbs are always better than straight limbs. The one thing that drivers do complain about when they get out of the car is that they're so tired. That's because they have the wrong seating position and most of their weight is could be on their shoulders or maybe they're leaning one side on their butt so that when you get out of the car, you feel so tired. Now, you don't want it too straight up like you're in finishing school, no. And you don't want it laid back as if you're a vato loco from East LA, no, no. What you should be able to do is find a comfortable position with it slightly, just very slightly leaned back so that it relieves the pressure from your lower back. By doing so, you can easily distribute the weight through your entire body while you're seated in a comfortable position where your shoulders can be as close to the backrest as possible. Doing this when you get out of the car, I guarantee you, you won't feel as tired as you normally do. Next, the steering wheel height probably the simplest one of them all. You just gotta make sure that it is at an angle where you can see your instrument cluster clearly and that your view of the road is unimpeded. Next, your hand positions. Now, 10 and two were recommended in the past and it's still acceptable till now, but we rather keep our hands at nine and three for several reasons. Number one is so that in an accident, if the airbag does need to deploy, it doesn't hit your arms. It's free to, well, save you. Number two, in that same accident, your hands will then be at a bigger angle, which means no straight limbs, less damage to your body. Number three, it's so that when you are driving in that position, your shoulders are much more relaxed. See the difference? 10 and two, nine and three, big difference. The nine and three position also puts the steering wheel buttons within your reach. And finally, when you do need to make simple turns, your hands can stay on the steering wheel without being shuffled because then you can turn the steering wheel just like that. And finally, I know you're itching to go, but lastly, your wrists. They're important, trust me. Make sure that when you put your wrists, they are comfortably rested on top of the steering wheel with your back not leading way too far from the backrest. Now what this does, is it ensures a proper driving position. Magic. What isn't part of our quick tips are seat belts. Because that shouldn't be a recommendation, it is after all the law. Drive intelligently everyone.